Come on, give him your best praise. Give him your best praise. Give him your best praise. Shout because the victory's already won. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. Wow, what an awesome presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome. Holy Spirit, have your way. If we're getting out of the way, help us move out of the way. If we're, just help us get out of the way, Holy Spirit, that you could do your work in this place today. And we give you praise for it. And the church said, amen. amen. Thank you so much, team. Amen. Yeah, let them know we love them. We do it every week just because they're so amazing. Yes? Amen. I would like for you to open your Bibles, please, to Acts chapter 14. And then we will take our text from verses 19 through 22. Acts 14, 19 through 22. We're going to uh, close out the series we've been on, on Revival Reset. Revival Reset. Acts 14, 19, 22. But the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, and having won over the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. But while the disciples stood around him, he got up and entered the city. And the next day he went away with Barnabas to Derbe. And after uh, they had preached the gospel in that city, they had made many disciples. They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Revival, reset. As we were mentioning last week, I think one of the, the, the key uh, portions of this text, and there are many that we've been working on, is the fact that they returned. Paul and Barnabas returned. Where did they return to? They returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. They returned to what we called last week the belly of the beast, the epicenter of darkness, of sorcery and witchcraft of strong religious uh, spirits that had been unchallenged. No one had yet challenged them with the light of the gospel or the gospel of the kingdom. They had their way. And when they had their way, all humanity were under their sway until Paul and Barnabas showed up. And they showed up preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And as they began to preach the gospel of the kingdom, as we know, they saw revival and then riot. Or they saw harvest and then hostility. You just see it over and over again all through the book of Acts when you follow the journeys and, and, and the assignments that uh, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas and others that went with him went to. And so after they had, after they had taken care of the sorcerers and they had, they had released a power to effect signs, wonders, and miracles through the healing of a, a, of a man that had never walked before. He had been crippled from his mother's womb. And then uh, uh, there was the sorcerer who Paul basically j uh, just called out a, a mist from heaven and blinded him. And, and it said when they saw that the sorcerer had been blinded by Paul, that they, their hearts were open to receive the gospel. And they began to receive the words of life. And so it began to open up a region and a territory to the gospel message uh, that had not yet been preached and the people who had not been reached. And so many disciples were made on this journey. Paul could have went home and rested, but Paul said, no, we've got to return. We've got to go back and check on them and see how our disciples are doing. We, we must go and we must, we must uh, find out how they're doing. And he said, we, we must go because they need to be strengthened in their souls. And they need to be exhorted in their faith. Uh, as we've already talked about that, the strengthening of the soul and the strengthening of the faith. Uh, and so we have to go back and do this. So Paul's intention was to strengthen them in their souls and their faith. And so as I was reading it again this week and meditating on this text, I realized Paul's intention, but Paul's intention, how did he do that? How did he strengthen them in their soul, and how did he exhort them in their faith? Well, if you, if you continue on with the text uh, in verse 22, he, he said, and, and, and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And so how, how did Paul strengthen them and, and i'm using the term revival reset because revival came to that region through the, through the through the apostolic ministry of paul 
and Barnabas. And then he said, I'm going to return and I'm going to strengthen them. The word strengthen means to establish or to firm a thing. It means to set stronger. So he said, we're going to go back. I know God has done an amazing work in the life of the disciples and the church. But we're going to go back and we're going to set them stronger. We're going to set them stronger. Or he's saying, we're going to reset. We're going to reset what God has doing, what God has been doing in their life. So the encounters that they had in the first initial experience, the signs and the wonders and and, and the miracle power of God and the preaching of the gospel that they received so changed their life. Now we're going to go back and we're going to reset that. Somebody say reset. And so this is important because discipleship brings sustainability to revival. And Paul wanted to make sure the work of revival didn't die. He wanted to make sure that it was, see, this is our vision in this house. It's not just to have revival as an event or for a season, but to have sustainable revival. Amen. That means we're not going back anywhere. We're only moving forward into greater levels and dimension of revival. If you believe that, say yes. So Paul's intention then was to strengthen them and to reset their their souls and their faith. And he did this by saying that. That little word, saying, is very important because we can just read right over that and say, oh, well, they, just, they just sit around talking about these things. But when you, when you study the word saying in the Greek, you realize that, that it's actually from, from a Greek word called legos or lego, like lego, like Legoland, like lego. And it simply means to speak, but it means to speak strong. It means to speak uh, Deeply felt words. It means to speak authoritatively with great conviction. So so Paul didn't come back to have a conversation. He came back to make a declaration of revelation. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Paul said, I got to get back there because I've learned something that I didn't know when I was there before. And God did an awesome work in their life. And and I've got to go back and strengthen them in their soul. And I've got to go back and exhort them in their faith. And he went back saying a revelation. He went back declaring a revelation over them. Paul went back and he dropped a revelation bomb on them that was getting ready to shift them and reset them in their souls and their faith. Yes? That that word is, is, is quite impressive. It means it's telling us that our voice represents our authority so when we raise our voice we release our authority come on mom and dad you know what i'm talking about you know when you're talking to your kids there comes sometimes conversation isn't enough you've got to elevate your declaration to get their attention paul went back there look if you're looking for a church where they have conversational like preachers, this is the wrong house for you. We don't come on Sunday to have a conversation. We come to make a declaration. We need to come to declare this is what the word of the Lord is saying. Paul showed up with a revelation and he came up and he said, I am going to declare this to you. And what he began to declare to them was simply this. Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Okay, right. Like how many of you have that on your refrigerator? Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. This is how we strengthen our souls and strengthen our faith. Through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. So what's the revelation there? The revelation is Paul was trying to teach them. Is you must learn how to turn pressure into power through many tribulations the word tribulation there in the Greek is telipsa it means high pressure situation it's where we get the word squeezed crushed and stressed So how are you going to be strong in your, how are you going to be strong mentally and emotionally? Because you're going to have to go through some pressure situations. (laughs) 
it is a high level intensity that is, that is uh, almost unbearable in the natural. So it's not just like the pressure we all live. You know, we all, we all got pressure. This is, this, this is, this is a whole nother level. So Paul is saying through many pressures, we enter the kingdom of God. This is the revelation. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 4.20, For the kingdom of God does not consist of words, but in power. It does not consist in words, but power. So the kingdom of God is power. You must enter... Or you must, through many tribulations, you must enter. Or through many pressures, you must enter into power. I'm just laying the foundation so we can get this because we're going somewhere. And, and, and so and, and this word enter is also very interesting because it means this. It means interest into any condition. To enter a condition or a state of a thing. A state. And so he's telling us that we are entering in. When you enter into the kingdom of God, then when you enter that kingdom, you are possessing the condition or the state of that kingdom. So it's not just, it's not just a place or a thought or an abstract thing you go into. It is concrete and that it is real. It is the kingdom of God. And he said when you enter it, when you go into it, then you go into the state of it. And everything that it consists of is yours. Woo. Let's talk about the kingdom of God for just a, little, just a little bit so we can get a good understanding of this. See, uh, the, the authority of a kingdom is determined by the amount of power that it possesses. So the, there are some kings that rule over kingdoms who serve other kings Because the other kings have more power. This this, this is important. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. Then he closes the prayer out. Yours. Is the kingdom yours is the power and yours is the glory kingdom power glory kingdom is the authority of heaven power is the ability of heaven glory is the atmosphere of heaven When you enter the kingdom, when you get into this place, it is a place where the authority of God, the ability of God, and the atmosphere of God, or heaven, is at our disposal. And so he's telling us, in order to continue to reset revival, and to continue to have sustainable revival, then you're going to have to learn how to access the kingdom. The power and the glory. The kingdom is where the power is found. He's telling us. He's teaching us. It is the rule and the reign of Christ. Some believe that that, that this is a progression. uh, It's it's a natural progression in that the authority, when authority is established, power is released and glory is created. So they believe you go from authority to power to glory. Glory. But really what I've come to deal with today is glory. See, the kingdom of God is the government of God having dominion over a territory. And when Jesus and the disciples spoke concerning the kingdom of God, and they did. Matter of fact, the last message that Jesus spoke was in uh, Acts chapter 1. And he said he spoke for 40 days things pertaining to the kingdom. The last message that Jesus preached to his disciples were the things 
pertaining to the kingdom. It would be the last words that he would deposit in them. He wanted them to have an understanding of what the kingdom of God. And we know all through the gospels he taught about the kingdom and then you run all the way to the end of acts and you find paul the apostle locked up in an apartment somewhere and people would come and people would go and he would teach them about the kingdom of god and then all through the book of acts they preach the gospel of the kingdom you must understand where i'm headed today because you see when they talked about the kingdom what they were talking about where they were referring to the redemptive rule of god in christ defeating satan delivering mankind and then breaking the power of the enemy off them and then bringing them into the authority and the power of god And so I just want you to understand this because Paul said, listen, if you're going to be able to sustain this thing, if you're going to be able to have a a strong mind and a strong spirit and strong faith, then you're going to have to be able to tap in to the power of the kingdom. And the way you get there is through pressure. This, this power, kingdom power, glory, power is dunamis. It's dunamis, dunamis power. It's, it's where we get uh, our English word dynamite, dynamo, and dynamic. They found, they're rooted in dunamis power. So he says, through pressure, you're going to move into a place of power. You're going to move into a place of dynamic, explosive, dynamo, energized, dynamic, effective power. In other words, he's saying you're going to have power and you're going to, have, you're going to be able to live out the ability of heaven because power is the ability of heaven. And as you begin to live this out and walk this out, he said, you're going to have power to break through things. You're going to have power to keep moving forward. Dynamite power. Dynamo power. Just keep moving. Keep pressing. And then he said you're going to have this dynamic power, which is, which is accomplishing intended purpose. Effectiveness. I, I need to speak to someone in this room today. Because someone is, is, is carrying a great weight of failure upon you. Or at least you think you're a failure. You think that, you, that, that, that nothing... See, when you, here, here's the deal. Success and failure are not events. You may have had some events that didn't turn out the way you expected them to turn out. You may have worked hard in some endeavors and they have not turned out to the measure that you would call successful. Those are events. Success and failure are not events. They're attitudes. They're attitudes that we carry deep in the soil of our spirits. Because when you have an attitude of failure, the smallest thing, the littlest thing, could cause you to quit. And you take on a mentality that everything you do fails. Nothing I do ever matters. Nothing I do ever, ever, ever is ever successful. And we take on this mentality and it's an attitude. But if you have an attitude of success and victory and dominion. Then it may not turn out the way you want it to. But it doesn't matter. Because you know it's not over yet. See, some of us quit so easily just because it gets hard, because it doesn't look like it's going to work. I guess I'll just give up and go do something else. Somewhere along the way, you got to plant your feet, stick out your chest, and make up your mind. I'm not moving until this works. Yes? Do you realize that in the natural, in the natural, 
that God created us to carry pressure. You realize that? Do you, do you know there's this thing, and I know y'all are so smart because you probably know this, but there's this thing called Google. And I was, I was doing some research, and, and, I, and I, I got studying about the atmospheric pressure. Y- y'all know what that is? See, y'all so smart. See, science tells us or teaches us that things respond to pressure. If pressure goes up or goes down, things move a certain way. We respond to pressure. Now, atmospheric pressure is quite unique, is that the the, the gravitational pull in the earth, and this is simplistic, this is like, are you smarter than a sixth grader? Not because of y'all, but because of me. (laughs) So there's the gravitational uh, uh, pull on the earth that pulls on the earth's atmosphere, which is mostly uh, nitrogen and oxygen. And it pulls on it, and when it pulls on it, the weight of the oxygen or the atmosphere comes into the earth. Science tells us that that can be up, the the human body can pull the weight or carry the weight of the atmosphere, because when it comes down, it comes, it comes down, but, but it's, it's, it's unique because it's got all these molecules, and they're all moving around, and when it gets real thick, they get real heavy, and, and, and they're going north, south, east, and west all the time. They're all around us right now. That They say, when you're at sea level, you could be carrying up to a ton of weight, a ton of pressure pushing down on you. And the question obviously is, is how can we physically endure this ton of weight or pressure that is coming upon us? Well, the way that works is that we are not only have external pressure, but God created us with internal pressure. That while weight is coming on us. Externally, God created our organs internally to match the pressure that is external. If it didn't, we would be crushed under the weight of the air. Science lesson 101. Atmospheric pressure. I thought that was so, that's just like God, isn't it? Of course, scientists have a way of figuring that out, but God knew. He knew how this earth was going to function. He knew how creation was going to function. He knew how the plants would function and how the animals would function and how human man would function. He, he's the one that breathed the breath of life into us in the first place that caused all of this to start working. Atmospheric pressure. So as you go higher, the molecules get thinner so the air pressure is less. So as you go deeper... Then the, the, the molecules, they get thicker, and the air pressure is greater. That's why when you go up mountains, your ears pop. Because our bodies were created to try to match the pressure. So when pressure changes, things change. And my body's going, you got, you got to fix this. That's why when you get in a plane and the plane goes up, it depressurizes and they have to pressurize it. Or we would all get, I guess, crushed. I don't know scientifically if that works, but sounds good. <laughs> have you ever been on a plane and you had a bottle of water and you opened it up and you drank the water and then you, you, you put the lid back on it and you said and, and you forgot about it. And then the plane lands and you reach down to get the water and the bottle is crushed. Why didn't it crush? It's crushed because when you went up into the plane, there was, there, was, there was less air pressure. You took the lid off. It got filled with the less air pressure. You drank it, put the lid back on, and then when you came down, it got surrounded by greater air pressure, and it crushed it. What 
Paul is trying to teach us here is that pressure in kingdom advancement is real. It's not something in your mind. It's not something in your imagination. If you are a kingdom person and you are advancing the kingdom and you are moving into the kingdom, then you will move into the kingdom through great pressure. But hold on. Because at the end of the pressure is power. Yes? Now I want you to go over with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8. Paul writing again, he said, For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction or our pressure, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively. Beyond our strength so that we despaired even to life. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves. So that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Who delivered us from a great peril of death. And will deliver us. He will deliver us. He on whom we have set our hope. And he will yet deliver us. You also joining in helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf. Watch this. For the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. When you, when you look at this as face value, it looks like Paul is a victim. He said, I, he's writing to Corinth, but he said, I, I need to make you aware of what I've been dealing with in Ephesus. He said, we were under such great pressure. He said, it was beyond our ability to bear. He he uses these terminologies. Affliction. Burdened excessively. Beyond our strength. He wasn't playing. He was letting them know, this thing is real. When you begin to advance kingdom. When you begin to experience revival. You need to know something. Because in Ephesus, we experienced pressure like I have never had in my life. I know this ain't shouting yet, but somebody needs to get this deep in your spirit. Because if you understand where I'm headed today, there ain't nothing that hell can do to stop you. And it's important that we have a clear understanding of the context from which the Apostle Paul is speaking in this text. And you need to understand this morning what was going on in Ephesus. Paul uses terminologies like this. I fought with the wild beast of Ephesus. He said there was great opportunity, but yet there was many adversaries around us. You see, what what Paul was going through was revival had come to Ephesus. And when when revival came, it unsettled the religious ecosystem. And it challenged uh, the powers that be. Uh, There was this intensity that Paul was pressing on in Ephesus. He says this wild beast was not only out to stop a man, but it was out to stop a movement. Because it went beyond a city, it went beyond a church, and they began to follow Paul everywhere he went. It was the spirit that was assigned to bring pressure upon him. Oh, somebody help me preach in this place. See, here's here's the picture. Revival has swept through uh, the city of Ephesus. It was so massive that it left behind it probably one of the largest churches ever of the first century. It was a church full of signs and wonders and miracles and revelation. Paul built it. Paul taught it. Paul discipled it. It was a beast of a church against the powers of darkness. And so you understand then this this city that was the epicenter of the dark side of power and prosperity and perversion. All of these things were wrapped into the religious system. 
But when Paul showed up, it said so many people were walking out of Temple Diana because they had received the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ that they were about to go broke because nobody was buying their stuff. Nobody was seeking to worship her. It shifted everything in a city. And in this place, Paul says, I have been burdened and I am under pressure. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Paul, the apostle, the greatest apostle ever. We read his revelation. He received it and wrote it, and now he's saying, some even believe that he was suicidal. It was so intense. Plus, I, I, don't, I don't know. Paul said, I, 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 I'm not just fighting for myself. I'm not just fighting for a city or a church. I'm fighting for a movement. Because by now, Paul was without a doubt the premier apostle. He was the strength He was the revelation setter. He was the church planter. He was breaking open dark places time and time again. And finally, this spirit, this wild beast of Ephesus, this this, this territorial, dominating, unchallenged spirit rose up against him. And he says, I don't know if I'm going to be. He said, I've got to share with you, Corinth. I've got to let you know what I've been dealing with and what I have been under. And then he stops and he says, but hey, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for praying. You see, Paul, all of this external pressure was weighing up on him. uh, But somehow through the prayers of the Corinthian, the Corinthian, the carnal church, this church had so many issues. They probably had a hard time finding anybody that would want to pastor him. They had divisions. They were carnal. They were were sexually immoral. They had all kinds of incest. They got everything going on in this church. But somehow there was a remnant in that place that understood the power of prayer. And I don't know how Paul knew they were praying for him I don't know how when they prayed for him but when this external pressure got so great the the internal pressure inside of Paul somewhere along the way began to rise up not only to match the external pressure but to explode in power You, you ever seen this warning Contents under pressure. This is where Paul is. Paul is like this pressure. The contents in me is rising up as the external pressure got greater. The dudamus that was in Paul began to get greater. And he said, I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I was going to get through. I hit the wall and I didn't see any way out. But I just want to thank you because I had a revelation that the God that has delivered me will deliver me. Uh The God that has delivered me will deliver me and will keep on delivering me even though I could not. See, 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 you know what I'm talking about. When you get to this place, you got to have somebody else to help you. Some battles you can't fight alone. Sometimes you need somebody to come up beside you and begin to say a prayer over you and speak life into you and breathe into you because I don't think I can take it another day. I don't think I can carry this any further. And they, and Paul said, but I just want to thank you because you've been praying for me. And when you pray, this thing turned. He calls it because of your prayers. There has been favor bestowed upon me. Favor has come to me. Favor has come to me. He said, I felt like I was in the sentence of death. And I felt like I there was no way out. I've been through the court of humanity. It says you can't handle it and you're going to die right here. But then he said, you prayed and the thing shifted in my favor. 
So I got up and I beat down the beast of Ephesus and we saw revival and we saw signs and we saw wonders and we saw miracles. We saw a release of Deuteronomy's power. Contents under pressure. Get ready because explosive power is getting ready to move through you. Somebody shout yes. Stand up on your feet please. Prayer turned the pressure into power. Paul now carries this revelation and he says, Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. This thing shifted. And I, and I couldn't find any connection anywhere, and there might be, but I couldn't find any connection anywhere. But there was a conversation between Paul and the church of Corinth when he was in Ephesus saying, pray for me. So apparently, God saw the way that Paul was under. And he was a faithful warrior. But this time, the warrior needed somebody to pray for him. So God picked a bunch of carnal, Corinthian, I don't know why, but apparently there was a remnant that heard and that felt. So I just want you to know that God has a way. If he needs to, he could put your weight on a grandmama laying on a dirt floor in a mud hut in Lagos, Africa, crying out and moving the pressure to power, turning it to your favor. Why do I preach this today? I preach this because as we continue on in our faith and we continue on in the strengthening of our souls and we reset back revival time and time and time again, there will be pressure. It may be physical pressure. It may be emotional pressure. It may be financial pressure. It may be relational pressure. Pressure comes all different directions. But what I'm talking about is different. I'm talking about the fact that there was this beast of a spirit that didn't want to let go. And he didn't want to let go, so he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up the apostle. I'm going to push him to the limit. Because if I can stop the man, I can stop the movement. Paul said, I ain't never felt nothing like this. But when I was ready to give up, throw in a towel. I thought I was going to die. You prayed. Now this sounds a little self-serving, but I'm really not talking about myself today. That was not my intention. My intention was to speak to you today. Because there's way too many that when things get pressurized, they just stop. Church, we're pushing on some things. 
We're pushing on some beasts that have had their way in this city way too long. And if you think they're just going to throw down their hands and walk away, they think it belongs to them. They think they belong. They think they have a right here. And they think that the harvest is theirs. But there's a group of people that is rising up in this place that have made up their mind. No, sir. We have made up our mind. No, sir. It may get hard. It may get long. The battle may be tough. But we will draw our sword. We will put on our armor. And we will push back. We will push back. We will push back. How are you going to push back? We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Jesus said, pray always and faint not. Pray always. So I have come ready today to pray over you. I have come ready today to speak to the pressure. And believing that it's going to turn to your favor. That thing that's sucking the life out of you. That thing that weighs you down so you can't worship, so you can't praise, why you can't even pick up your Bible. My friend, that's not natural for a Christian. That means there's a spirit pressing on you. And you got to stand up and shake yourself. And you've got to make up your mind. I'm not giving in to this one inch. Not one inch. Not one inch. Not one inch. Not one inch. See, Paul wasn't a victim. Paul was showing them this is the way to victory. I got to let you know where God has brought me from. So I don't know if there's one, if there's many. I do not know today, but I feel like there's some. And even Pastor Kim was, was pressing on this earlier. Emotional, mental, physical, financial pressures like you have never dealt with in your life. Not normal stuff, but I mean, you know, man, you just said, God. I think I don't know if I can push through this anymore. I want you to know I believe today is your day. I believe today this is your moment. And so if you're ready today, I just want you to come and I'm going to pray over you in the name of Jesus. And I believe the pressure. God's going to turn it. 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 Ah, God's going to turn it. God's going to turn it. Due to his power, lift your hands up and then I'm going to come through and just lay hands on you quickly. If the altar team wants to help me lay hands on people quickly. All pastors, help me lay hands on people. But I release over you now in the name of Jesus. Due to his power. Explosive power. In the name of Jesus, I speak to all pressure points and I command it to be broken in Jesus' name. I command the weight of the enemy that is on you to be broken in the name of Jesus. I command it to lift and I I command praise to fill that space right now. I command praise to fill that space in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Power! Power! I'm ready for
this expansion we must not underestimate what we have awakened in the spirit realm
You cannot take for granted even simple things that happen. And you're sitting around and you're like, where in the world did that come from? This doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You cannot cast off to coincidence or just that was weird. Where did that come from? That is just so odd, so awkward. Don't underestimate in the demonic realm what you as a believer that is pressing to push the kingdom forward, what you awaken. But also don't underestimate that the last time that I checked, Jesus still has the keys to the kingdom. To death, hell, and the grave. And he's given us the keys to the kingdom. Don't underestimate that greater is he that is in you than the one that you may have awakened. Don't underestimate that the pressure that you have been feeling is because of the assignment that you have been given. Don't underestimate that that completed expansion has awakened something in the territory that says, oh, wait a minute, there's a group of radical people that are believing for a third great awakening and a Susa type movement. Don't underestimate that the same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and by the authority in the name of Jesus we can press back against the pressure because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent ones take it by force don't underestimate the dunamis that's on the inside of you I need some revivalists up in this room this morning that'll lift a shout that will rip open the heavenlies don't underestimate Estimate the power of God that can work through you. Don't underestimate when you start feeling these feelings of lethargy and apathy. Don't underestimate the power of when you start negotiating with spiritual things in your life that you never used to negotiate about. Don't underestimate that because there is a devil at work trying to take you out trying to take us out, trying to silence our voices, trying to get us off focus. Somebody, come on. But the word of the Lord is, don't underestimate the power of the authority of your voice as a, as a child of God. Your authority, your power, that the power of God in you and your voice being released. Hallelujah. I just, I, just, I just feel like I need to say that again. There's some things that we dismiss sometimes. And we need to be more discerning in the spirit. And we'll teach y'all more on that. But when we've done it around here in classes and stuff. We need to be more discerning in the spirit. That some of these things are not just happenstance. Now some things your flesh causes. Come on. Some things just, it, you know, whatever. Yes. But there is also a devil out there roaming around seeking someone to devour. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Watch now. We got to go deeper in this and understand that as the assignment of this house expands, the assignment of the enemy expands. But also the power and the equipping of the Holy Spirit, come on, expands with us. Amen. Somebody say, we are winning. Somebody say, I am winning. Somebody say, I am winning. Come on, shout it. I am winning. Scream it out in this place. I am winning. Come on. So in the name of Jesus Christ right now, I take authority over every evil voice of the enemy that has come against you and put pressure on you and has put pressure on your mind and pressure even on your physical body. I take authority over it in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand here and I break the assignment of the enemy. And with one voice in this house, we will march as 
a church of revival and we will establish revival in a region and in a nation in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout the rafters off in this place. This Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Wow.